offer and had a chance to relax. Um, we are going to get started with just a few opening slides. I do have uh, manager Dr. Rob Dietrich with us. Uh, if you want to go ahead and get us started, Rob. I would love to. I do want to compliment someone on the call here first. I think Colleen, if, uh, Colleen, if you're there, I see your background. It matched the music that was playing in the background, so that is very perfect. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for being here today. Welcome to the home based meetup sessions, July 26th through 30th. Of course, these are virtual, and we're very glad to have you here. We understand it has been a busy summer for everybody. We have a bit.ly that Pam has put in the chat, as well as we have one for the slides available as well on the bottom right corner. Next slide, please. This is our welcome to WebEx slide. As you can see, you have several options during the meeting. You have captions that are now available in the left corner. You have a QA question if you only want to ask us, the panelists, or you have a chat where you can ask everybody. And then you have your pieces at the bottom there that are your controls for the video, the mute. If you're asked to chime in, please do so. Uh, and that is how you control WebEx. Next slide. I do want to give a couple of overviews. The home base products, for those of you who may be new to home base, I do want to introduce it to you. Uh, real quickly, it is a student information system, which is PowerSchool currently, the instructional improvement system, which is SchoolNet, the learning management system, which is everyone at once, Canvas. Canvas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the open education resource, which is Go Open. Uh, the educator evaluation system, NESIS. We have a digital literacy program with learning.com, and we have a supplemental math program, Imagine Math, that is available through convenience contract. And our goal is to be the definitive, seamless, go to re digital resource for North Carolina for educating students. Next slide, please. The purpose of the home based meetups is to have great collaboration between DPI and all of you because that's extremely important to us. We are hearing from you. And we understand and you help guide the product as well as we give you updates on what's going on with Canvas and the and the other products we have. Next slide. Here are all the links um, that we have. We only have one left. If you are interested in coming to Go Open next week, please, or next week, tomorrow, please click on the Go Open link. And if you would like to see any of the recordings from before, Please also enter those other links. Next slide. This is our schedule. We have this week, and then we're going to go in September. What you can see in September, November, and May is we are currently planning on going out and trying to visit school systems again and getting out to be a part, which we have not done in a very long time. Uh, we are very much looking forward to that. However, as you can see, it still says west to east, east to west, and west to east, because we have not locked down locations quite yet in order to do this. Pam, if you would, please, can you click on that upper right corner? Thank you. Yeah, I would appreciate if everyone, um, as, if you are unaware, home base is part of digital teaching and learning. There are actually two events we need locations for. They are the fall reconnect in September 13th through the 16th and the home base meetup in September, November, and May. If you would please, if you will read this and then you are interested in being a host for these events, please reach out by filling the form at the bottom of the screen and that will help us identify places and try to sew these dates down in fact so that we can get information to the field as quickly as possible. So, again, if you are interested in hosting for us, please fill out that form and let us know. Um, Jill, I think Jill's on this call. Did I leave anything out there, ma'am, or do you have anything to add? She was. All right, next slide. These are all the sessions that we have had so far and all of the slide decks that go along with them. So please make sure if you have missed a session because you wear multiple hats or you couldn't make it that day, please make sure you visit these opening slides and get a copy of every presentation we have done. And tomorrow it will be complete when we put the go open information in there. Um, next slide, please. More updates now for home base. This is our social media extravaganza. 
This is where we have all our call signs, every piece of information you need to get up with us and know what we're doing. We've also added um, this year, if you look down at the bottom, we've added something new. There is a link there that says on YouTube home base overview. That is a little cartoon video we made that explains a day in the life of a family going through home base and everyone that may interact with all the programs that we have. It's about a five minute video that you are free to share with other people so that they can see everything that is home base. The home base team actually did this together. It was a, a very good exercise for us, I thought. So please share that out, put that out there, make sure your people are aware of everything that happens. Uh, next slide, please. Home base meetup updates continued. We have a SIS upgrade August 6th through the 9th. We're going to be jumping to version 20.11.3. Uh, I need to change this slide. Please get the slide deck and watch the video if you're interested in learning more. We had a very good session yesterday. Uh, we trained folks on many of the new features coming. One thing I am very happy to announce, and I think is very interested for the people on this call, Canvas Studio is now available at a dollar per user for you. And this is something that we think you should really take advantage of. This is a great video engagement uh, program that Canvas offers in order to ensure your students are learning the right information and they are engaged in that learning. And it is, isn't simply just a sit and get watch video. So I believe it is a very good feature we have. We are also looking for someone to pilot transcend for us. If you're interested, please contact myself or John Mars. And then the NESIS new principal pilot rubric is underway right now. We have, uh, I think about five districts that are piloting that. And then we have a wonderful home base opportunity. This is going to be a little bit of sorrow at the moment as I explain this next part. Um, unfortunately, Pam has left us for another opportunity. We are very sad to see her go, but we are very thrilled for her and that this new opportunity brings her lots of new challenges. Uh, so with that, if you are interested in being someone to become a part of the home base team, once the application is posted, we will get that out there for you. And what I also want to share with folks while I have an opportunity is Pam and I have been working on a transition plan really over the last two weeks. I believe we have fine tuned it this week. Um, I'm going to help with the support tickets and trying to take things underway. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I will answer them with Canvas as best I can. And if not, I know the, the resources to get to to get you answers. What I do ask is just be patient with me as it, any transition, it may just a little bit more time than you're used to, but we will work hard to make sure that that level of service continues at a very high level. Next slide, please. We, this year, oddly enough, one of the things that I was curious about when I first took this job is was there ever a home-based survey to check the efficiency of home-based survey and whether we are serving the needs of the field? And the answer I heard was that no, there was not. We had done some feedback forms at the end of a home base meetings, but that is all. This survey is only about five minutes. I would please ask that you would take this survey so that we can understand your view of home base. We're gonna publicize this. I would like this to go to teachers, to administrators, and it, the way that the logic in the survey works is it's only going to ask you questions about the products that you use. So this, that way it shortens the survey and you don't have to thumb through a bunch of questions you don't know the answer to. So please take this survey so that we can get a very good idea of where home base is now so that we can take it to even better places in the future. And I can work with the home base advisory group to make sure we are steering home base in the right direction for you and the students you serve. Next slide, please. This is our wonderful home base team. Unfortunately, as we mentioned, this is one of the last slides I'll have Pam on where she is part of it. Uh, but this is the wonderful home base team. We are all here for you and we appreciate your feedback. When this session is over, please go to that bit.ly there to give us your feedback on whether this program met your needs and we look very forward to working with you this upcoming school year with the challenges that we continue to have educating students in the state of North Carolina. Pam, thank you very much and have a good session. All right, thank you so much, Rob. So we're gonna transition over 
to the Canvas slide deck. So I'm going to pull that up and give everyone a moment to get that um, pulled up on your screen. Let me copy this. So I put that link in the chat, but here is our Canvas uh, specific slide deck. And um, we are excited to go ahead and get started. So our agenda for today, we have some, we're going to do some welcome and introductions. It's the start of a new year. So I see a few um, new names on the uh, chat today. So I want to make sure I give everyone a chance to introduce themselves. Um, I have a few updates and then I'm going to be turning it over to our awesome uh, Canvas uh, CSM team for North Carolina to go over uh, some tips and updates from structure. And then we're also going to be doing breakout rooms for collaboration. And then we'll have uh, time for closing and reflections. Um, if you have uh, questions, please feel free to uh, mute and pop in. Um, you also can uh, put them in the chat and I'll be monitoring that throughout the session and um, we will uh, we'll be sure to answer you as uh, time goes on. All right, so we're going to start with just some welcome and introductions. So um, in the chat, or if you would like to unmute, you're welcome to do so as well. If you're in a place where you can share, I'd love to know your name. Um, your role, uh, which district or charter school you're representing, and then um, our fun question on a scale of one to five pandas. Um, how long have you been a Canvas admin? Uh, and so you get bonus points if you go find um, the get emoji and uh, paste in pandas. Otherwise, you can just tell us how many pandas <laughs> in the chat. Yes, Earl is one of our Canvas superstar veterans. He's been in here for more than five pandas. Oh, there's some pandas in the chat. Yay, James, you get extra credit. Oh, Colleen's also got five pandas. <laughs> Yeah, Elizabeth, I think you get um, five pandas plus, right? Because <laughs> you do so much campus. Uh, yeah, you have a zoo, yes, a zoo of pandas. <laughs> And any other late eighties, early nineties uh, child remember um, Friday night TGIF on ABC, and you had um, you had Full House, Family Matters. You, it was the best night of TV. Like there will never be another better night than um, ABC TGIF. But anyway, <laughs> did I do that? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So I do want to give a moment to shout out to our wonderful, awesome uh, North Carolina Canvas CSM team. We are like, I think the only state, right? That has their own team for North Carolina. So I want to show off how special we are. So if you uh, want to unmute and introduce yourselves, please do so ladies, you are rock stars. Uh, thanks, fam. So um, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Lauren Barris. Um, I'm the strategic customer success manager. Um, and Ashley Brough, I'll just introduce her. She actually has been out of town and this is her first day back. So she, we told her she could catch up on the work she missed the last few days. So she's not here, but she is another one of our customer success managers and she's awesome. I'm sure you've all interacted with her. And then Erin, I'll let you go ahead and um, say hello yourself. Yeah, good morning, yeah. everyone. My name is Erin Hull and I'm also on the uh, North Carolina CSM team. Um, I love seeing so many pandas in the chat. I am also here in North Carolina with you all. I love uh, working on the North Carolina team. All right, thank you. 
Um, and just to let you know that the our CSM team has an email address, which I'm sure you are all familiar with, uh, but it's North Carolina K12 at instructure.com. And feel free to um, email them whenever you have questions or need help. They are awesome. Um, I emailed them myself. Thank you, Lauren, for putting that in the chat. Um, and they are always responsive. So please feel free. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Acacia, I yeah, email all the time. Yeah. All right. So I do have a couple of updates. Um, I know that Rob mentioned this earlier. Um, I have accepted another position. I'm going to be back in Johnston County. Um, so I will be back at least uh, for meetups. Uh, so you will see me back in the district uh, wearing the district hat. Um, and my last day is tomorrow. Um, and I do think that there's so much truth to the journey um, that teaches you so much about your destination. So I learned so much in my four years at DPI and getting to interact with you um, and getting the chance to go visit your schools and your central offices. And um, I'm taking all that wisdom and knowledge back. Um, and I know Dave's on the on the call. He's excited. Um, and I'm excited to be back to um, Johnson County is my home. So, you know, anytime you can uh, go back home, it's always a nice thing. So I appreciate it. Uh, please feel free to reach out to the team at home base. They are going to be doing an awesome job filling in for me until a new me is here. And um, who knows, maybe it could be one of you on this call. Um, <laughs> if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out. Um, but it has been a wonderful four years and I'm taking a lot of that knowledge and wisdom back with me. And I look forward to being able to interact with you all um, in person um, at the district level. If you guys are in the North Central uh, region, you'll see me at events and things. So we will stay close because we are family, right? So um, just another thing I wanted to talk about. So I am really excited about this, and this is something that has come up a few of you have emailed me about um, is some more professional learning support um, for this coming year. And so we actually uh, are partnering with Instructure to provide um, some dedicated support for professional learning events for this coming year. We are going to be having our monthly webinars for teachers um, September through April. Um, we are also going to have a new Canvas admin support series. And I'm going to talk about this just for a minute. So this is going to be open um, to any Canvas admin with less than two years. So if you are new last year or this year um, to being a Canvas admin, we encourage you and hope that you'll be able to join us for this series. It's going to be a monthly series. We're going to start in August and go through December. It'll be a 45 minute. Um, informal get together. It's not going to be anything uh, super, um, super formal. Um, we'll do a doodle poll at the first meeting to determine, you know, what works best for the group. And then you're also going to get access to an awesome self paced course with a lot of resources. Um, and we will we'll kind of pace out the course. So that way, each month at our at our 45 minute meeting, we'll be talking about a specific chunk of the course. So hopefully you will work through that section of the course and then we'll meet and talk about it and answer any questions. So I'm really excited about this series um, for new Canvas admins. Um, and then we also are going to have training from Instructure at our home base meetups in September, November and May. Um, so we'll have one hour. Um, so in September, it's going to be talking about account data. In November, it's. Oh, it just left me, um, but then I know May is going to be end of the year best practices. Um, so very excited about this to sign up for any and all of this stuff. Um, you have to go to this link. Okay, so um, this Qualtrics link here, there's also a QR code. You can register for just one thing or you can register for everything. Um, and then you'll get an automatic email back with the uh, Zoom link for whatever you registered for. Um, so please uh, feel free to take this uh, and pass it along because teachers will use the same link to sign up for the webinars as well. Um, because the first question it asks you is what your role is if you're a Canvas admin or if you're an educator. And then it filters through uh, what professional learning opportunities are available. 
any questions about this professional learning that we're planning for this upcoming year. So it's on the slide, but let me go ahead and put it in the chat too. There you go. So. All right. If you have any other questions about the professional learning coming up for this year, please uh, feel free to let me know. Um, or you can email the home base team and they'll be able to uh, point you in the right direction as well uh, to the professional learning um, survey. All right, and then uh, just a reminder, we do have a Canvas admin course uh, where I put um, all of our home base meetup information, the monthly call information, as well as you have um, a discussion board where you can connect with other Canvas admin. And then we also have a Google group. So I'm going to put that in here. So please connect with each other and uh, join these if you have not already. So that first link in the chat is the enrollment link to the Canvas admin course. And then the second link that I just put in the chat is for the Google group. And so if you um, request the Google group, I will be approving those um, as we go through the meeting today. So any questions about our Canvas admin course or Google group? I know summer is a time of transition. So if there are new folks in your school or district that are going to be take, wearing a Canvas hat, gonna come join us as pandas. Um, then please feel free to give them these links as well as the slide deck. So that way they have um, this important information for the beginning of the year. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and Lauren, I will pass it to you. Thank you, Just a second here. There go. All right, should be asking you, Lauren. Yeah. All right. We're good. Let me make sure I've got the right screen selected. You all see my screen okay? Yep, we do. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and then I have to just rearrange. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, WebEx is great. When you start sharing your screen, everything moves. Yeah. <laughs> so to move things around so I have access to everything. Um, okay, so we're good to go. So I know, um, like Pam said, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of changes in the summer. So some of you, this may be your first year doing Fall Start with Canvas. Um, uh, for some of you, this might be your second year or, and as we saw in the chat, some of you have, in the zoo, you, you're just, this is par for the course. So, um, with that, though, we still always like to do reminders of best practices and things to just remember as you are preparing for a new school year. So uh, with this, this presentation has links to all the resources that are going to go over. So you will um, have access to that. I know Pam, they always send, uh, Pam and her team always send out the recording and the slide deck. So you will be able to access these. Um, we're also going to be covering this in our North Carolina statewide call on Monday. Uh, and so we send it out in uh, later. We'll send it this presentation, or I'm sorry, we'll send out our meeting presentation, which has these same slides um, next week. So you'll also receive them there. So you should be able to have access to everything that we share with you today. Um, just some general guidelines first. Um, we have these beginning and end of year course checklists, which are really fantastic. Um, what I'm going over today is just the 
just sum up what's on this list. So um, it's kind of the things to make sure you keep in mind, but uh, it's in no way covering everything on these lists. So um, I would recommend taking a look at, at these resources. Uh, as you can see, one star means that it's an essential thing to do. Two stars is best practice and then three stars is above and beyond. So depending on how long you have been uh, a Canvas admin or how long your district has been using Canvas, uh, it could kind of guide you a little bit on where to focus your attention um, at this time of the year. Another thing I just want to note is every instance of Canvas is unique. So different districts set things up a little bit differently. So these are recommendations, but how you roll them out and what is going to work best for your district is going to vary based on um, the settings that you've set, permissions, and how you are rolling out Canvas and the expectations that you've set with your teachers, students, and even parents. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, I always like to remind uh, folks about the Canvas community because it is a wealth of knowledge. Um, there's a lot of things you can search there, both in terms of guides, user groups, and also questions and answers that other admins have asked. Um, and, and I've seen admins ask questions there and get uh, answers from other experienced Canvas admins. So it's a great community that you can find resources in. But then as always, if you're not able to find the questions in the community or you have a very unique scenario or you just wanna ask um, us as your CSM team about it, you're welcome to reach out to us. So again, our email is North Carolina K12 at instructor.com. And we are happy to answer any questions. Um, if you need to schedule a call, um, you just let us know and uh, we're happy to do anything that we can to help you be successful. So the first thing we're going to talk about is best practices for admins. Then we'll talk about best practices for instructors. So you could uh, know what both roles should be paying attention to. So with admins, the once your rollover has completed, I know that for some of you, your rollover, uh, your Canvas rollover, which is when your data for the 21-22 school year starts coming into Canvas from PowerSchool. For some of you, that has already begun. For others, that's going to be happening here in the next few weeks. It's very dependent on what you uh, filled out in your rollover survey. Um, if you can't remember or you just want to double check, again, reach out to us. Um, we can take a look at that. You also could, um, you should have gotten an email confirming that you filled out the form. So searching your inbox uh, for the word Canvas rollover or the words Canvas rollover should help you locate the that information there so you can see those dates. But what you, we really want to make sure that you understand is on your terms page in Canvas, where you see all of these dates, it is absolutely essential that the term runs from uh, these dates are not changed. This is what is coming over from PowerSchool. And if the term dates in Canvas do not match what's in PowerSchool, you're going to have syncing issues. So uh, when, when you look at this, if the dates are not matching what is in PowerSchool, you want to submit a ticket to Canvas uh, so that our SIS team can take a look and see what's going on. Uh, but generally, you know, those, those will update properly as schedule changes may occur or, you know, snow days, things like that come up. And Lauren, can I check, can I add a comment in there? Yes, absolutely. This is a good time for me to remind everybody that we are doing an upgrade on August 6th through the 9th to a new version. And I would encourage all of you to go in your systems, your settings, double check everything, make sure everything is syncing properly. Um, I don't know if you want to send alarms on the 9th unless it's something major, but just check to make sure that new version just keeps things going well. Um, I don't believe I'm speaking out of turn here. Pam will let me know, but we have tested it to make sure that everything should go right. But, you know, sometimes when things go into productions, things go a little wonky. So please just make sure that this is something you look at and check all these things when it comes up August 9th to be sure it is functioning as properly and let both Canvas um, and PowerSchool folks know if it is not. Thank you. And and just to clarify, yes, we have tested the PowerSchool upgrade um, for version 2011.3, um, and it did work 
correctly. And then also um, other uh, Canvas customers across the uh, across the world, I guess, um, also use 20.11.3. So I think um, I feel pretty confident that it should be smooth. But as as Rob said, it's always a good idea just to double check um, because you just want to double check anyway um, at the beginning of the school year. So just keep that date in mind uh, for the power school upgrade. Yeah, thank you, Rob and Pam. The other uh, something else I want to mention about the terms page, because I, I hit it pretty hard. Don't change the term runs from dates in Canvas. Uh, but what you can change is the access dates. So this is going to be, you know, maybe your term ends on December 23rd, but teachers need access through December 30th to work on grades. I don't think those dates would actually really be the case, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, and so if teachers need to have access beyond the term date, you can click the pencil icon, edit the teacher access date. That's going to allow them to continue um, grading or, or doing anything that they need to to wrap up their course, uh, but students won't be able to continue submitting work. Um, and again, this is going to impact every course that is associated to that term. Um, Another thing to a common question that is asked is, can we update these access dates in mass rather than going term by term? And there is a way to do that if you are familiar with API calls. If you're uh, comfortable with that and familiar with it, you can do it in bulk through API calls. Um, but other, otherwise, it is a term by term thing. Just a little CSM tip, make sure you double check the times. Uh, so remember using this example here, December 23rd at 12 a.m. That is actually going to be uh, midnight of the 22nd. So just remember that, that if, uh, you know, again, using that December 30th date for teacher access, if they need to have access through the end of December 30th, then you would technically select December 31st because it's at the date change when they lose access. If I hope that makes sense, but if that made it a little bit more confusing, uh, let us know. Uh, but just remember to check the times and uh, remember which, you know, re remember that 12 a.m. is uh, a date change. The other, another thing for you to be looking at is grading periods. Some of you may be using grading periods, others may not. Um, if you're not familiar with what they are, they allow you uh, to essentially control when students can be submitting, well, yeah, submitting work, but also teachers can continue to change grades in the gradebook. Um, we often see districts using grading periods uh, and setting them up so that they match the grading schedule with PowerSchool. Uh, so they don't want teachers to be changing the gradebook after the grading period has ended so they'll set up the grading periods in Canvas to match what it is in PowerSchool. Um, you always can, uh, something to keep in mind with grading periods is you have a single grading period, but you can associate multiple terms to it. So maybe all of your high schools are, all the terms with your high schools are gonna fall under one grading period. Middle schools may have another one and then elementary have their own. Perhaps you have year long, semester. There's a lot of variety of ways that you can do it. Um, I always like to mention that the start and end date is when students will be able to actually submit the work for assignments that fall within the grading period. The close date is similar to teacher access date. Um, it is what allows teachers to continue grading the work. So again, that would match whatever dates you have with PowerSchool. Um, the other thing to keep in mind with it, uh, if there, and this is something to let, um, oh, you know what, I need to turn off my camera. My computer just told me my CPU usage is high. So just to be safe, I should probably turn off my camera. Um, if I can figure it out while I'm presenting. I can't, we'll be fine. 
Um, so uh, with the grading periods, if teachers have assignments that are falling or they don't have a due date, by default, they're going to fall into the final grading period. So that's something for them to be aware of because if they have a lot of ungraded assignments, then they're going to have in their grade book, if they're filtering their grading periods, they're going to see a lot of assignments in there. Most of them are ungraded, but um, just that's just something to note that that's where they fall by default. The next thing that you want to make sure you do as the Canvas admin is to go through and check your settings. So this is going to be your, um, uh, you know, on your settings page and you'll, once you go into your settings page, there's the settings tab and then there's also the feature preview tab. Uh, make sure that you're taking a look at that, that everything is how you would like it to be. Um, that's going to include things like when students are able to view their schedules, um, you want to make sure that your sub accounts are organized correctly. So there's a sub accounts page in Canvas. You can take a look at those will come. Your sub account structure comes from PowerSchool. So again, you know, it's going to reflect what's in PowerSchool. So there's usually not much that you need to be worried about there. But that's where you're going to know if, if there are any new schools. Um, perhaps your district has a new school um, this year. You're going to see that in the sub accounts. If you have a new school that's missing and that data is not coming into Canvas, you want to make sure that it was added to the SIF agent with PowerSchool. That uh, that's something where you'd contact PowerSchool. Just make sure that it's added to the SIF agent. If it is and it's not showing up, then you need a Canvas ticket. But that's the first step: is to make sure that PowerSchool is sending that new school. Another thing to take a look at is your roles and permissions. Uh, you want to make sure that everything is in place there, that students, teachers, account admins, everyone has uh, is, is doing or allowed to do what you want. Restrictions are in place where you want them, et cetera. Um, one, I like, and you probably have noticed each slide has a CSM tip, um, but make sure that um, anything that's going to impact the user interface, that's what UI stands for, um, the user interface experience, that that's done before the school year begins or at a semester change, uh, because that can be confusing for users if uh, the workflow changes or the view changes mid-year. Content dis distribution is something that I'm sure a lot of you are going through, uh, how, how, how best to share templates, or if you have a curriculum team who's built out a lot of uh, items for teachers, how best to distribute that. There are three ways to do that in Canvas now. So this is a resource. And again, there's a slide at the end with links to all the resources that you'll be able to, to use. But this is a content dis distribution comparison list. It's really comprehensive and very helpful. It shows you the overview of each of the the processes and pros and cons to it, things to be aware of, any limitations with certain options. Uh, so it's a great resource for you. We have blueprint courses, Canvas Commons, and course templates. Um, if you are using the new template feature, uh, which just really briefly, and if you have questions about it, we're happy to uh, answer those in the chat, but the course template feature is where any new course created either through PowerSchool or um, manually, once it's once the shell is populated in Canvas, it will automatically have the predetermined template loaded into it. If you're going to be utilizing that this year, make sure that those are set up and assigned to sub accounts before your sync has resumed because it cannot it won't be applied retroactively. So it's just the initial creation of those new courses. So that's something to keep in mind. The other thing to remember um, is that templating allows for more of a uniform look with navigation settings. So if you want the, um, the course menu to be simplified for everyone, templates are a great way to uh, simplify and make that more uniform throughout the district so that users have a, the same experience from course to course uh, of how to navigate their courses. 
If you have tier one support, you have what we call a support KB. KB stands for knowledge base. This is, as a reminder, this is where you uh, give certain directives to our support team so that they can provide teachers who reach out to them with the responses that you want for certain issues. If a parent or student reaches out to them, um, you can tell them here's where you can send them because as a reminder, and this is a good beginning of the year reminder, um, parents who have issues, or our support team does not, if parents are not included in the, the support package with Canvas. So, uh, when, so when parents reach out to Canvas support, those agents aren't actually able to help them with Canvas issues. So again, if you have tier one support and you have a knowledge base, you can be really specific about those directives. So now it's, this is another great time of year to make sure that any links or any information that you have in your KB is current and, and live. Uh, we had a meeting with one of ours, uh, a member of our support team just last week um, and just asking them, you know, what are things that slow down solving cases? And, and one of the things that she said was, if they have tier one and they have a KB and they've add and they have inaccurate data in there, that's going to slow down resolutions. So it's a great time to take a look at that. Um, I did link to the admin and console. So you have a reminder of how to access that. Another thing that you should be doing is making sure that your communication with key stakeholders is clear and that everybody understands the why the what, the when, the how, and the where with Canvas. So um, it's always beneficial for folks to understand the why behind why you're using Canvas. Um, that can be for your key stakeholders, but also for teachers as well. But we know that Canvas is most successful when it comes when the support comes from the top down. So if uh, principals and other leaders in your um, your your schools understand why you're using Canvas. That's really beneficial. Uh, a lot of times we see you using Canvas for professional development. So make sure that they know what's available, when they're going to have access to their courses, how they can get those that content, um, which we're going to go over when we're in the instruction instruction. Wow, instructor <laughs> um, portion of the the presentation. Um, but that'll all be really helpful. And you can't over communicate um, as, as early as you can share information with them and as frequently as you can, uh, the more prepared folks will feel. So with instructors, and uh, this is, again, you're gonna have the access to this so you can share this information with instructors. A great thing for them to have if they don't already is a sandbox. A sandbox is basically a course that doesn't have any any data with live students in it um, or live courses is where a teacher could be playing around. They're going to be building content for the next year. Between years, they may share their their course or keep their course there so in summer they can be updating it and then easily import the content into the new course shells rather than having to rebuild every year. Um, so again, is a great place for that master copy and they can make changes. They're not gonna impact anybody who's currently in instruction. If you are cross-listing, and I know some districts, you have your courses coming in already cross-listed, others do it manually. Um, just as a reminder of what cross-listing means, uh, that is when you have, let's say I'm an English teacher and I teach five sections of English, um, if my if my district was provisioning data in what we call a one to one format, um, I would have well we'll say six sections since this is here. Um, you, I would have a course tile for each section. Cross listing is manually rolling those up. So I would put all of my um, all of my English courses into a single course tile. If you're provisioning what we call one to many courses are already coming in in that format. So for those of you who uh, have the one-to-one -one format, you will want to make sure that cross-listing occurs before content is added to courses. And the reason for this is because any submissions or work that students submit 
don't follow when you cross list. So um, the, the data doesn't disappear. You have to decross list, but you want to make sure that if cross listing, you do that before the school year uh, begins. Now, this is what I mentioned before, how teachers can be importing their content. There are, they can do it from their sandboxes, they can use direct share, and they can use commons. Uh, depending on, you know, maybe your district or your charter has given teachers a very specific instruction of, on what to do with courses between school years. So there's maybe just a single way, or maybe you leave it up to them to do it for themselves. Um, they could, these, they could be using all three of these, depending on how you have things set up in your organization. So I'll go over what that kind of looks like. The importing, this is something where the, the instructor would go into the course if they got it in sandbox or, or whatnot. They'd open the new course. They would go to the settings page in the course, and then there's the option to import course content. Then they would copy a Canvas course. That's either going to be a course from last year, or maybe they put it in their sandbox, so they're going to co copy it from the sandbox. Um, and, and then they can select if they're going to bring over all of the content or just specific. This tip is really important to make a note of. If you have templates or blueprints in your, in your district, um, advise instructors to import select specific content. The reason for this is because when you import it, it's going to override the templates or blueprints. So again, if you're leveraging those tools to have maybe a uniformed home page and course navigation, um, if the course that they're importing doesn't follow that same format, it's going to override it, and then and then the course won't have that that format that your district or charter is is wanting. So that's just a tip uh, to. Communicate that with teachers if you'd like to keep that uniformity. The direct share is really great for specific items or an entire module. Um, so it's not something where you'd bring the whole course with, but you would go directly into this little kebab of either the item or the module, um, and you would copy two is what you'd select. And that's how teachers will be able to then select which course they want it to go to. So again, that's great for specific pieces or, or modules. And commons uh, is the last place where they could be getting content either that they've built themselves or perhaps you have provided for them. They'll just access commons through the icon in the global navigation. They'll ask them to authorize, which is completely normal. Um, and then they can search and filter within commons. So filtering allows them to filter just for your organization, or maybe they're filtering just for courses, modules, et cetera. Um, but it makes it easy for them to, to look around for what they need. And then they import it into a course. The tip that we provide here is that if a teacher is importing an entire course from commons, um, to import it into their sandbox, because then that allows them to pick and choose if they only want certain pieces of it. But also if they import an entire course to maybe ex an existing shell and not the sandbox, um, it'll overwrite anything that's already in there. So that's why we do recommend importing it to the sandbox, uh, a blank course in the sandbox so that it doesn't override anything. Uh, teachers, I mentioned this earlier, customizing the navigation menu, but this is a great thing if you, you know, maybe you're not doing this through templates, but the beginning of the year is a great time for teachers to streamline everything and make the navigation menu much more simple. So when they go to their settings, there's a tab, the settings of the course is a tab for navigation, and that's where they would drag and drop things from being visible or hidden. Uh, and so, as a teacher, they can hide a lot of things that students don't need to see and, and make it easier for them to navigate the course. By hiding things like assignments, quizzes, discussions, things like that, it makes it very easy for students. They'll just go to the module and they'll, they'll follow, you know, the modules as they've been 
as they've been designed. We do recommend module as the best practice for course organizations. So um, that's why I mentioned that. And then teachers can customize their course settings. So very similar to what you as the admins will be doing, uh, they should check in their course to make sure that the settings are how they would like. Um, there are things like letting students attach files to discussions um, and disabling comments on announcements. I mean, you, you all know how to read, so you can see this here, but um, there are different settings that they can look at and set those up. They can be updated at any time, but it's a great beginning of the year process to take a look at. Um, uh, and I think, I think everybody in the edu education world knows this, but it's easier to be more restrictive at first and then open up more options as needed. Uh, so that's, again, something to consider. Teachers should also run the link validator. This is going to let them know if there are any broken links in their course so they can catch them before students are working in the course rather than being inundated by maybe 30 students saying, hey, I, I, can't, I can't access this, what's going on? Uh, so I have instructions here for how you run that link validator and then uh, it allows teachers to fix any broken links as necessary. Then this tip I think is really, really valuable. When a teacher is, you know, first day of school, they're setting classroom expectations, they're orienting their students on, on everything that they need. When they are showing them Canvas, we do recommend that they show it to them from the student view. This allows the students, it's gonna be more consistent. So when the teacher is demonstrating, here's your course, here's how we're gonna work with it throughout the year. Um, when they're seeing it the same way that, the, that they themselves will actually be using it, it's gonna make it a lot easier rather than seeing the teacher view where they would see things like announcements. So, um, some LTIs will not be visible in the student view uh, because they're right there in the rich content editor. So it's something that the teacher sees. So again, highly recommend using the student view option. And then we can't stress this enough, make sure that everything is published. Um, that's a pretty common thing to forget. The course has to be published. The actual assignments, discussions, quizzes, et cetera, need to be published. And then a big one that gets missed is the module header needs to be published. Um, so always important for teachers to make sure things are published so that the students can actually see the, the course. Like I said, we have the resources here. So this slide has all of the resources that I mentioned for admins. Uh, it's going to provide, like I said, provide you with everything that you need. And then we also have a slide here for all the resources for instructors, and you are welcome to share this with any, everyone on your, your team internally and with teachers if you would like. Uh, Aaron's been a gem and helping Pam in the chat, so I think any questions that came in there, she probably answered. But um, if there are questions, like I said, uh, North Carolina K twelve at Instructure .com, we're happy to um, answer any questions and even set up a call with you if you need some help making sure you're all ready for the new year. Before I move on to the last few Canvas items, I do want to just ask though, are there questions that anyone wants addressed at this time? This is James. Could I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. Yes. I put this in the chat and Lisa agreed with me and it's probably something that won't happen, but in that term details page, Boy, that's a lot of stuff. Is there a way that we could ever get a way to sort that by year, semester, quarter? Because when you're trying to get in there and deal with that, you know, there's just a lot of information in there and there's no way to sort it. It's just, you just have to hunt, pick, and search. Yeah, that's a great point. Especially if you've been with Canvas for several years, that gets really long. Um, yeah. And I just saw Sarah's chat come through, but, and it's exactly what I was going to recommend. There's not a way to filter it. What you can do is be, is, and this is not something I would recommend doing at this time. This is definitely a summer thing to do. Um, but archiving your terms, which essentially what you do. So let's say you were using Canvas in 2018 and 2000, you started using it in 2018. So you've got data for the last few years. If you want to 
combine what archive of the terms means is you basically take all the terms from the 1819 school year and you roll it up into just a single term. So all of those, perhaps it's 30 terms. Although I know for some of you, it is much more than 30. Uh, but let's say that there are 30 terms from the 1819 school year. When you archive them, you would put them all into a single term. So that cleans it up. I know um, that, like they said, Ginger Jackson from Cleveland County has some great, has a great resource. And I think I just saw Sarah share it of how they, they manage that. I know Corey McNeil from Rowan Salisbury does this every year. Um, so that is what we would recommend because like, like you said, there's no way to filter that page. So it is a archive term option. Now, if that is still, if, if that's still not, you know, something that meets the needs, um, I would definitely recommend posting in the Canvas community, the idea, because I've heard it before. Um, so it allows you and others to share the benefit or the need and whatnot. Sorry, I mean, Ar archiving helps, but the things you archive are always below the things you're doing this year. So it, it's not like archiving, yeah. it's look cleaner, but the things when you're trying to work with high schools or quarters or something, you, you really, I mean, it's, there's no rhyme or reason how it comes in there. And, you know, like mine, I just looked at it starts out with quarter four. And then it jumps down into some semester stuff. And then I see some quarter two. I, I mean, it's just really random. Yeah. yeah. Most most everything in quarter four is together, but it's not chronologically organized or anything like that. So that it just makes it a challenge. And if you could sort it in a way for what you're wanting to deal with, it really would help. But I mean, I'll see what I can do about putting it in there. But I, I think a lot of us would be very thankful to get that um, in a way we could do it. And yeah. Organize yeah. It. I think that's a great point, James, that it's not necessarily, and I, I myself hadn't thought of that, but that it, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Um, so Aaron, do you mind putting in the chat just how they could put this recommendation in the community? And I yes. think, thank you. I think it's real. it would be valuable to call out that piece specifically, because I think a lot would say, oh, we'll just archive your terms. But um, that, that point that you made is really beneficial and, and I haven't seen anybody call that out. So um, I think, and I'm looking to, to see if there is an idea conversation. I think I've found one as well. Right. Um, so I'm going to share that, but I'll also get you guys instructions on how to share that. Um, because like Lauren said, that is definitely a, um, a concern from others as well. Oh, thanks, Aaron. Uh, well, for the sake of time, I'm going to, Move forward. I know we've got breakouts and we'll make sure there's time for, for questions at the end of those as well. Um, but like I said, any questions about this process, feedback, thoughts, anything like that, um, let us know. We are, we, like, I, I think I said this earlier, we want to make sure it's as smooth as possible and uh, the year goes as successfully as it can. So a couple of updates from Instructure. Uh, some of you are, have been made aware, I'm sure are already aware of this, but, um, our classic quizzes, our, well, our quizzes team has officially begun the sunsetting process for classic quizzes. So they have provided some documents. The, this timeline blog post is really important. If you can't stress this enough, subscribe to it. Um, this is where Susan, the product manager, is going to be posting updates on the process of the project, any updates to the actual timeline um, and, and updates uh, of, anything that they change in, in the in the project or things like that. So take a look at this. It's a Susan's great at providing really in-depth updates. So I would definitely recommend reading through it, taking the time to read through it. Uh, and again, subscribe to it so you won't stay informed of any of the updates. Uh, and then this will help you begin the conversations internally about how you want to start preparing teachers for the process. They also have a Q&A section that they put together. I would recommend taking a look at that. One of the questions in here addresses specifically parity between classic quizzes and new quizzes. Um, so take a look at that. I know that's been a concern of if it's gonna, if 
new quizzes is going to do everything the classic quizzes can do plus more. Um, so that would definitely take a look at that. So we just want to make sure everyone is aware that this is beginning. Um, their, their, the roadmap is shown in the timeline, so you could take a look at that, but they are looking, but it is going to be next summer that classic quizzes is sunsetted. So now is the time to start those conversations and making plans for that change. The other thing that I wanted you to be aware of, I know that a lot of you were using summer school this, well, you're always doing summer school, but a lot of you had a lot, there was, summer school had to be, because of the legislation, there was a lot going on with summer school. So if you were using Canvas for that and you need some reports, you can do this from the report section of your account settings. So I did link here to a guide that will show you how to do that. The report that you want specifically is the grade export report. So that's going to allow you to get uh, the final grade information. The other thing to be aware of, then this is just kind of a fun, if you're interested thing. There, we've done some research about the impact of the pandemic on teaching and learning specifically in K-12. So there's a free ebook that anybody can download. We just want you to be aware of that in case you're interested in seeing what that research has shown. And with that, Pam, I will go ahead and stop sharing and, and you can take over the breakout rooms. All right, get the slide pump back up. And just to let you know, um, there have been a lot of great links in the chat. Um, so we've had uh, some new guidelines here at DPI about things. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the chat and I'm gonna go back and make a Google doc with all the links that we shared today and add that um, to our course for our admin course. So just to let you know, um, be on the lookout for that later today. I'll also add the slide deck link and the recording once it's available. So that way everything will be in one place um, in the Canvas admin course. Uh, so we are gonna go ahead and do our breakout rooms. So we have um, three rooms today that we're gonna break up into. We have about 50 folks, so that should give us uh, a nice, uh, group, we're going to do 15 minutes. We'll come back together as a whole group and kind of share out uh, for about five minutes. And then we should do another, be able to do another round for 15 minutes. So you'll have, you'll be able to pick two out of the three rooms to go into. Any questions before we kind of get started? Great, so we, um, I am going to allow you to be able to select your own breakout room. So um, in just a second, when I start them, um, you should be able to see the new tab at the bottom of your screen that says breakout rooms. But if for whatever reason um, you, you can't see them yet, um, you can put in the chat which breakout room you would like to do. So we're gonna have um, setting up for success. If you have uh, want to talk about questions about the new school year and getting everything started, um, we have we have a room for professional learning and what you're doing um, for teachers or admin or anything else you want to chat about for the year. And then I also thought with um, it would be timely to have a new quizzes room. And uh, so. Yes, so the breakout rooms, um, James, thank you for sharing up here above the participant list. Awesome. All right, so um, I'm getting ready to start them and you can choose either setting up for success, every mountain high or new quizzes. So you can uh, chat through those and we'll have about 15 minutes. So I just opened them. And so you should see the participant list and you should see the join options. I see some people are popping in there. If you need help, just put in the chat which room you'd like to go to and I'll get you there. Oh, and as a note, um, breakout rooms are not recorded. So sorry, there will not be notes from them. It's your turn.
Thanks, Jacob. All right, I see Ashley, Chris, uh, Corey, and Latoya. Do you guys need help get into a breakout room? All right, I'm going to go ahead and head to every mountain high. So feel free to chat if you need something.
and give everyone just a few more seconds to get back in. All right, who is our spokesperson for uh, setting up for success? That would be me, Jody Holy. Oh, hey, Jody. Hey, hey, how are you? Good. All right. Okay, so our group, the the first item that was discussed was an issue that that some of the districts have experienced with um, their um, courses for this year coming into Canvas, but the students aren't populating, and so um, Cumberland experienced this last week. And we actually had to request a restart on a SIF agent um, with PowerSchool and then have the SIF import rerun. And that seemed to fix it for us. So I don't know if there's any other feedback from anyone here on that issue, but um, if your courses are there, your teachers are scheduled, but there are no students, um, that's what we did in Cumberland and we shared that with our group. Um, the next one, a uh, question about setting up grading periods now for the whole year versus as you go along. Uh, the recommendation was to set everything up now and then just make adjustments as needed um, if dates change or um, things need to be extended. Uh, also, the question about whether or not districts um, use Canvas and PowerSchool for grading and how they uh, you know, if they use the sink or if they hide the grade calculation in Canvas and use PowerSchool as their authoritative source. Um, so different districts do it different ways. Uh, the biggest uh, takeaway was make sure you communicate with your parents and your staff so everybody knows the expectations in your district, whether it's using your PowerSchool uh, portal as your um, authority or if Canvas is that uh, for your district. And I think there was one more. I didn't know I was going to be the spokesperson, so I wasn't writing everything down. But it seems like somebody else had a question. If you're in my group and you had a question that I didn't mention, unmute. I can't remember. There was a question about publishing. Yes. So what if the publish button is missing from the teacher's uh, course? And so the, um, the fix for that was to try uh, to check the uh, Google Chrome version and make sure the version is um, up to date. And also some Chrome extensions interfere sometimes with uh, those buttons appearing. And so to get rid of excessive uh, extensions. So um, I think that was it. Thank you, Jody. You're and welcome. I will say that that SIF agent restart does seem to fix a lot of weird things that happen with things. So if you're missing a handful of students, a handful of teachers, get with your power school technical contact and request a SIF agent restart and then let your um, CSM know to request a manual sync um, once that's done. And that usually does fix everything. You should not have to do that often though. So if you are finding yourself requesting a SIF agent restart frequently, let me know or let our home base team know because that we shouldn't be a frequent thing, but coming back from the summer, I wouldn't be surprised if you need to have a SIF agent restart. Now, um, Pam, I just want to um, ask real quick, because we're having a little issue in Cumberland with, with all of the Canvas admins being dropped out of Canvas right now, so we're trying to figure out what happened and, and what's going on with, with the account. But when when there are changes made in HR and payroll, I understand that sometimes people get dropped and then back in. But on items like this, where it doesn't seem to be something local, and it's not everybody, it's just hitting this people, is that still a SIF agent request? Because it no. just seems a little odd. Yes, yeah. so I think for yours is a little odd, and I know I emailed the team earlier about it to reach out, um, but, and so especially since you had a SIF agent restart, you said last week right, for that right. other issue. Yeah, so yours should not be a SIF agent. Um, so we will definitely keep checking and 
uh, figuring out uh, what's going on, why you guys are getting dropped as central office staff. I, I seem to deal with that one every single year. And what happens is, is like when they move titles or anything, it seems to just check. And if they don't have any students anymore, like they've been moved out of the classroom to central office, it turns them deleted. Um, and then I have to go back in and make them active and re-upload. And, and that may have been what happened with, with that reset. Um, but it's weird that they did it with an admin, but somebody's got to get put back in maybe to go in and do a provisioning report and check if you all got deleted. Because you're probably in there set as deleted objects. Yeah, I mean, I like, yeah, one of our admin went in the back door to <clears> see, <throat> you know, if she could still get in that way and she could get in and we're still in there. We just can't access it through rapid identity. So it just says we can't find your account pretty much, which is scary. Do you know, <laughs> how, to, do you know how to run the provisioning report and check for deleted objects? Um, I don't know that we've ever done that before. Is that just in the reporting? Yeah, so if you, if you go to the report, run a provisioning report, include deleted objects, and then find yourself by your um, your sys ID, and it'll say deleted. If that's the case, then you can go put it back in a, a spreadsheet. Um, I can send it to you if you email me or CSM's can that just matches theirs, and then you just go through sys import and it turns you back active. Okay, we can't get in. We can't get in. I'm, I'm in right now, Jody, because I went in through the back door. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Um, where did you say to go? Um, go to reports, run a provisioning report. Dave, will you just put it in the chat for us so we can move on? I don't want to take up all the time. Yeah, sure, sure. Put, put your email address in the in the chat, and we can kind of talk offline. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, we know those issues do pop up. Uh, it seems to be from year to year, especially with central office staff. So, um, thank you, Dave, for sharing your knowledge there about that. Um, I believe the next room was the room I was in, which was talking about professional learning every mountain high. Uh, so, Samantha, did you want to give a quick recap for us? Yes, I'll be glad to do that. We started off by talking about um, the opportunities that we're offering teachers and professional development that we have coming up in our districts and things that we're going to be doing uh, to kick off our new year. Um, and then we um, I brought up a question about archiving um, some of last year's terms and um, I specifically said tomorrow is when my sis sync happens and um, starts back up. So I may see if I can still go in and archive last year's terms. I just had had a large struggle with that last summer. And so I kind of put that off with all the summer school stuff going on. But then I also brought up um, tier one support. Um, this is our first year going into um, having tier one support. And so I was asking some questions a little more about that and um, communication to the teachers and what they should know and setting up those per, uh, parameters within the KB, just trying to understand that a little more. Um, so, um, uh, <clears throat> Pam was able to assist me and tell me that um, there's some of you that may have some great uh, resources out there of what you have shared with your teachers when you train uh, changed over to tier one support. So um, if you have any of those, I'm always open to um, utilizing that uh, so instead of reinventing the wheel. Um, but she also uh, helped me to understand a little bit more about what uh, Lauren was meaning when she was talking about putting in those parameters uh, for my tier one settings and supports. So, and I, I don't know when that change will happen. Um, we didn't discuss that. So I don't know when my teachers will see that stuff show up in their help menu. So that was pretty much most of our discussion. Thank you, Samantha. And yes, Jody, I think I threw your name under the bus, um, just FYI for all the great things that you guys are doing in Cumberland. Uh, with helping support teachers. So um, give a shout out there. Uh, all right, last 
room? New quizzes? Who's our spokesperson? Um, I was the last one to touch my nose. So hi all. That's how that worked. Um, so we really just spent some time talking about um the changes that are coming. Uh I think both Union County and Watauga and some others have already had teachers starting to use new quizzes um, because they thought it was, you know, originally going to die this summer. Um, and once we found out that it wasn't, uh, that transition changed a little bit. But we did talk about some of the issues we're still seeing with new quizzes um, in that some of the items are not the robust items we would like and some issues with the item banks and just pulling in some of those those things. And um, Aaron provided, you know, again, subscribe to the new quizzes group as they are continuing to make those updates and, and pushing out. It looks like the, at least the migration of items should, and the item banks, that's a big project that will be overhauled this year and, and continue to have improvement. Um, it's one of the things that we would like to see, um, such as images for categorization for that drag and drop, those, those are not necessarily on the list. So you definitely wanna join the new quizzes group in the community and get your thoughts out there so that if we can get some changes made specifically for K-12 and, and to help benefit our teachers, that would be great. But Lisa or um, other folks, if you wanna jump in, hopefully I summarized it enough. All right, that's it, Pam. All right, thank you. Okay, so we have time. We're gonna open the rooms back up and you can pick another one or if you wanna continue the discussion and go back to the one you were in before. Uh, thank you to our folks uh, for sharing. And I'm gonna go ahead and open this back up. And again, if you have any issues, you can put in the chat which room you'd like to go to and we'll spend about 10 more minutes in the second room. All right, Corey, Dave, Jen, Latoya, Leslie, are you guys okay? Do you need help getting into a room? Okay, uh, Leslie, I'll get you back into the setting up for success. Hey boss, I'm uh, I'm gonna deal with this sink issue because it's kind of stressing me out right now. So. Yeah, no um, worries. Like um, I said, um, a SIF agent refresh will probably fix it. Yeah, I'm 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 going. I just got on with them, with uh, with them, and I'm gonna follow up on all this right now, and then okay. um, and I'll get it back up with Ashley. Ashley thought it was a, a SIS thing with DPI, so, but she said tons of people have had this issue. Courses created, no people. Um, but she didn't say SIF. She said it was IDs so that I need to contact y'all. But going into that room, it sounds like this is going to fix it. So I'm going to get on it, get it all set up. Yeah, try that first. And I'm, I've sent an email to them asking what they expect me to to give as far as. <laughs> also, also um, it looks like uh, we submitted for tier one and it looks like it's going to go through for next year. All right. All right. Well, let me wrap up this one and then right. I'll. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm All ready right. to get to work. <laughs> I'm trying. I me too. All right, bye. bye. <clears throat>
tough crowd. I'll tell you, it's a tough crowd asking for volunteers on Thursday morning. believe we have everyone back from breakout rooms. Um, instead of going room by room this time, I'm just going to take and see if anyone would like to share a shout out or a, a great idea that they learned from a fellow panda in their breakout sessions the second time. All right, that was my wait time. So um, I hope the breakout sessions were helpful and you got a chance to connect. Uh, feel free to share um, in the feedback form, which is next. Um, any uh, tips or suggestions, as well as if there's something that you would like to discuss for next time. Um, I am going to go ahead and put the feedback form in the chat, and that is our wrap up for today. Um, you will have an option when you complete the feedback form. If you would like CEU credit for today, uh, make sure you check that box and they'll ask you for your email address and your name so it can send you a uh, CEU certificate. Uh, but I just want to say thank you. And um, there are no words that I can put in to uh, express my appreciation for all of you the last four years. I've truly learned uh, just as much and not more from all of you than you probably ever have from me. Um, so, uh, thank you and I will still be on the tech director's threads and uh, North central meetings. So I hope to continue to get a chance to see some of you and interact, um, in my new role. So thank you.